What's going on, guys? Welcome back to United View. Hope everyone is doing very well. We were a couple minutes late because we were talking about something that's not football related at all. We were talking <laughs> about rock bands, Tina Turner, and then Dolly Parton. And she wrote, I will always love you. And then we were going, did you know that? And it was a, a mixed response of, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And Faz went, are we ready, guys? It was very, it was very serious. But welcome back, guys, to United View. Hope everyone is doing very well. Uh, having a great Sunday. We've got a lot to talk about this evening. We've got Frankie De Jong. We've got the transfer window. We've got Man United's preseason tour. Plus the little subject of Cristiano Ronaldo's future. We're going to be getting into that as well. So plenty to discuss. Shout out to the panel for joining us uh, this evening. As always, we've got Steph, DJ, Marcel and Faz. Uh, appreciate you joining me, guys. Let's start off talking about Frankie De Jong. Uh, the title is called De Jong Alternatives because it's been reported in the last hour or so. Believe it if you want. If you just don't want to believe it, that's fine. Uh, by Alex Crook from TalkSport saying, quote, I know Manchester United have a backup list if the Frankie de Jong transfer doesn't happen. Yuri Tielemans is on the list, as I understand, and Ruben Neves of Wolves. Steph, I'll start with you. No, this whole... no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, no, it's not going to be about that. It's going to all just be throughout this week, of course. There's been lots of discussion about... You know, Frankie, maybe to Chelsea. He might yeah. want to stay at Barcelona. Obviously, yeah. the financial situation with him and his bonuses and his wages. How are you feeling about the De Jong situation? Are you still calm at this point in time? Do you know what, actually? I am pretty calm. Um, I wouldn't say I've done, like, a complete U-turn, like, since last week or anything when I was, like, panicking about the transfer window. I think I'm panicking about the window as a whole. Um, but with the De Jong thing, I think it's just dragged on, like for so long, literally hour by hour, like day by day, there's just, it just changes. So I'm trying to get in the headspace of like the end game, like just waiting to see what will happen. Because if I continue to like feed off every single update about the Jong situation, I'm just, I can't do that. I, I, I've, I've taken a step back. I've basically taken a step back. I'm like, I, I don't want to know until it's done. So I think it's very responsible, actually. It's very responsible. And to be fair, you, sometimes you do need to do that with social media, don't you? If you live by minute by minute, it will drive you crazy. I mean, this week alone, I have seen one day that De Jong's preferred destination is Man United. The next day I've heard he definitely wants to go to Chelsea. And that was the same person and the same outlet reporting that, which is wild <laughs> when you think about it. Just really quickly, like before you get to the, the others, um, because I've been a bit out of the loop. I've had, I was saying to the guys before we came live, like I've just had a really stressful day, really stressful weekend. So I'm not completely up to date. Um, so Man United, everything. completely de-stress you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I did read an article about like, and sources. Was it, I don't know, it was a source, some sources um, saying like, like De Jong had 10 reasons why he snubbed, why he snubbed United, why he doesn't want to come. Um, and I don't know if any of you have read that article. I think it was in the Mirror. Um, and there was an article on Manchester Evening News. But I'm like, what What 10 reasons? Like, we should. We have no ambition. Ronaldo's leaving. Like, what What, what are the reasons? I don't know. But well, you maybe can come up with loads, couldn't you? Well, that article in particular, I, I think it only named four. I, I had read it as well. It, it, it only named four possible things. And, it, and it, so, it looked like they were opinions, if I'm honest. So okay. I, I think I've seen what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you're the perfect person to come to next, though, Marcel. I mean, how are you feeling about Frankie de Jong? I mean, calm, relaxed, optimistic? Yeah, super. So, Steph talks about the end game. The moment I realised Frankie de Jong was a possibility, I was already at the end game in the sense that I was very calm, very relaxed at the situation. I know that it's going to be resolved at some stage. And I'm, for me, the end game is he comes to the club. For others, maybe not so. But all the, the white noise and the noise, you know, in between that, I'm not, I'm taking myself away from this yoga, you know, quiet, you know, humming, mm, just relaxed, patient. <laughs> what noise is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just very calm, Owen, right now, because mm. I know that he either comes or he doesn't come. I understand that he's very pivotal to what we're trying to do going forward at the club. So it's nothing for me to be worried about right now. It's a very difficult deal to do. He didn't even want to come to the club. So that's, that alone just makes it very peculiar. It's, 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 this is only, like, you can't, this won't be able to be executed next window or the window before that. It's this particular window where this deal offers itself. So it's going to take time. 
I'm not worried about, you know, the the Laporta, you know, chess moves that he's playing. He wants a price. He wants a bidding war. They have business that they have to handle and they need the money. So I'm very calm with, with what's happened and how things are playing out. It's going to drag out. The, the really good question is the, the replacements. I think we spoke about Neves. Ibrahim Sangare, you know, a domestic talent from his league that he might understand a bit better. And like you said, Tielemans, they're, they're options if we do fail this. But I'm very confident and positive about we, we've been successful in this. DJ, welcome back. Absent last Hi, week. Man. We I missed know. you. Um, how are you feeling about Frankie Dion at the moment? As I mentioned, a lot of noise about um, Chelsea this week, speculation about Chelsea, uh, Chelsea. Then obviously all of this talk about his deferred wages and being owed nearly 20 million euros in deferred wages and that being a hold up as well. Are you sharing the calmness of Marcel and feeling that this one will get done, but it's going to take a long, long time? Do you know what? It, I, I think to, I'll answer that question in a second, but I think it's one of the things where I just keep comparing what other teams are doing. You know, other teams are going up there, getting their deals done quickly as it seems um other teams are a bit more efficient in how they're negotiating with with other other clubs and when it comes to united there's always something there's always something why the deal's slowing down there's always a hiccup there's always a hitch there's always do you know there's just always something when it comes to us with transfer winners so i'm kind of taking a stance um a bit like what steph's saying it's just that you know what i've kind of mentally checked out from it um like the rest of our community that what trust and you know trust us to update them guys i'm like you i don't know anything more than you guys yeah i'm just relaxing with this one um if he comes he comes if he doesn't he doesn't at this point i'm very sort of detached from it and the reason is is because it's taken so long another reason is is that just united just can't seem to get these deals over the line um you know and i think with de Jong, if we do get him i think it's irrespective of time i think whether it's the last day of the window and we get him, so be it, as long as he comes in. So um, I'm kind of a bit in the middle. It is what it is. If he comes, he comes. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But I just hope if he doesn't want to come, if he doesn't come, that we do have something in place where we can start, you know, getting the ball rolling and getting a replacement in. Because the thing is, if he doesn't come, because it's football, and we know it changes literally hour by hour, if he doesn't come and we get left with egg on our face, that's not a good look for us, especially where we're trying to, you know, give Ten Hag what he wants this season. So for me, kind of sitting on the fence with this one, I'll wait till he's holding the shirt. I think we've already got a bit of egg on our face. But, you know. <laughs> Perpetually. We just, we live with that egg. <laughs> yeah, you know. exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Faz, I did my research before I came uh, to you here because I saw a tweet from yourself earlier today. Here we go. And I saw this and I thought, well, this is perfect to bring up. At Planet Faz, give him a follow. Um, and I quote, I do not want Frankie De Jong anymore. I want N'Golo Kante. Thank you. <laughs> Ex <laughs> expand. I'm very happy today. You know why? Because I was the only individual that I can remember screaming and shouting and causing a hoo-ha saying, this boy does not want to come to our club. Saying, we're letting go of a player and we don't want the headache with him. Yet we want the headache with a player that doesn't want to come to us. I'm very happy because finally, deep down on the back of everyone's head, they are now looking for replacement. They have now come to some sort of sense and they are not letting their judgment be clouded by the whole beautiful fringe of Frankie de Jong's. They're not. Finally, we're looking forward for replacement, or we will be looking forward for replacement. It was a shame that three months went by and the whole transfer, since it started or whatever, since the talk started to now, we have not moved one step closer. Not one step. No advance talks, no salary talks, no contract, nothing. No add-ons, nothing. Nothing. Broad agreement. Broad agreement, Sorry. no? Sorry. no. Sorry. Unless it's pent... Unless it's pen to paper, it's not done. And 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 when I say this, you know, everybody finds it funny. But like I say, unless it's on MUTV, it ain't done. Because last time I checked, I thought Craig Erickson was here we go. <laughs> but Erickson is still not here. So I'm glad that we're looking forward for alternatives. I do not want Frankie De Jong. I don't. I don't care anymore. Because the sheer amount of pressure 
this lad will have when he comes to the club and every single thing will be scrutinized. I need everything to be smooth and silky with Ten Hag. I don't need any bumps. I don't want any risks. I don't want any headaches. I was very emotional with the Ronaldo situation simply because the way people started throwing him under the bus about X, Y, Z and blah, blah, blah. And the same thing will happen if Frankie de Jong now comes in after all this hoo-ha, especially when he doesn't want to come, especially when he's saying he, he, there's talks about him might decreasing his wages and deferring the, way, the stuff that he's owed and all this malarkey. And if things don't get delivered, the, fan, the same fan base will turn on him. This same fan base will turn but on. But Faz, Faz, do you know what? Just, just I'm just thinking as you're speaking. Do you think there is enough um, want from him to come to Manchester United? Because you know, there's reports he talks to Ten Hag every day, and if you're talking to someone every day, and you know clearly this is your old manager and he wants you and you had a great relationship, maybe that is enough for him to come, and maybe that's why we're still sticking in with this bid. Maybe that's why we're still at the table. I think you're missing the point though. Like DJ, like both of you, Faz and DJ, you made really good points. Like Faz, I um, completely agree with the point about like some fans wanting to, you know, get rid of Ronaldo because he doesn't want to be here and yet they're like begging Frankie de Jong to come. So that's kind of, you know, like a dichotomy in itself. So I agree with you on that point. But then with DJ also, like, I just, I don't think it's like, even if, even if Frankie Jong like talks to Ten Hag every day, which is great, like fine, whatever. <laughs> like, can any of you honestly say if you were owed 17 million, I would just be like, hey, like it, I'm Frankie Jong, Eric, or whatever, you know, Ten Hag, whatever. Like, I, I want to come. Boss. Yeah, boss. Do you know what I mean? Like, gaffer. Um, I want to come, but I, I'm I'm missing 17 million. From the bank, so I'm gonna gonna stay here and like wait for it. Like if I'll that leave was, the like, if you were owed money, like if you were I'll owed that it. amount of money, I don't care. If, like I don't care if you're rich and you're a footballer or whatever. But if you were owed that amount of money, I'd be like, I'm staying put. I Give disagree. Me, I'd leave it. Where's my money? I, totally I disagree. That's easier said than done, though. Dude, surely 70 million. We're talking. I know he's a millionaire anyway, but still, that's a significant amount of so money. Wait, so wait, Owen, and you also, think that I wouldn't leave 17 million. Do you think I'd leave that 17 million? You said I'd leave it. Help! Listen, I ain't leaving that. I was only yeah. Come on, you never take seventeen million. Listen, I'm say, knocking DJ, on the come door. On. Where's my money? Come on, where's my money? <laughs> let me exactly. um, for the for the people who are very much still in the Diong phase. Let me remind you. At the start of the conversation, it was De Jong needs to be sold. Barca need to sell De Jong. Barca will sell De Jong. And Barca must sell De Jong. At that initial time, there was not one report. Please go and find, because today I spent time looking for a report. Not one report saying that De Jong had issues with his wages. And it kept going on and on and on. And only now, after Barca's books got now balanced, or whatever they've done with their books, all of a sudden now there's money to be owed. And Frankie De Jong, let's not forget, is the only player that's money owed. There's loads of players who are owed a lot more money as well. And Barca's yeah. been in this situation before. And now all of a sudden, Chelsea are in the conversation. It is a, absolutely embarrassing. It is embarrassing as a fan base and as Manchester United to go after a player begging on knees for this long of a time. We should have even bluffed Barcelona and started putting bidding for someone else. Put ridiculous bidding, like a really low bidding for someone else just to show Barca that we're not here to mess about. Don't take us for fools. Laporte took us for fools. And it hurts people when I say it, but that's the absolute fact. It doesn't matter what happened last time with Messi, but we have been made fools that's what we are we need to now go for N'Golo Kante a and and someone I myself Owen has the receipts I said I don't want N'Golo Kante but look at me now I'm here with my opinion changed I would much rather go for Yuri Tillemans and hijack that deal between him and Arsenal or whatever go and get N'Golo Kante there's way more deals way more better CDMs or or high caliber of CDMs out there that we can get let this lad go let him have his own situation this toxic situation between him and Barca if things iron out between them we can then go in and make the deal if not Let's leave it. Before, so fans, go, go on, Steph. Go on, Steph. So I was just going to say really quickly, like before we get, before we like move into or talk about like Frankie De Jong, Frank, Frankie De Jong replacements, I was really interested to um, hear Owen's thoughts because you've been a bit on the fence. Well, I'll give you my thoughts. I was actually uh, planning this. Faz, into what you just said, I will say this. Well, unfortunately, I don't agree with you. Basically... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I would say that that's, honestly it's my favourite I'd play it again unfortunately I don't agree with you 
Tremendous. Tremendous. That's going on the soundboard. That's going on the soundboard next season, I'm telling you. Um, yeah, I thought the, the, the Frankie Young situation is, is that it's really complicated. And I don't think we understood at the time just how complex this was. Not only, there's always so many hurdles with this one, but again, you do have a player who doesn't really want to leave, but he's come to the decision now. He wants, he if he's going to go, ideally, he'd like to go to Manchester United. The reason he's come to that decision is because whilst he loves Barcelona, it's been reported this week that his his agents hate Barcelona now because they're owed a lot of money too. And the general consensus is the sort of deciding factor in the middle is let's just all leave. The issue also is, though, is that Barca might be willing to pay him something in terms of what he's deferred. And they said maybe three million euros. That's not 17, though. And do you actually buy, if you're Frankie Jong, you're ever going to see that money? Do you, do you ever buy that that's ever going to happen? I mean, Barca are putting bids in for players at the moment and clubs are coming back to them going, no, we want it all up front because we don't believe you've got it. We don't believe you've got any money at this point in time. They had a meeting with Todd Bowley from Chelsea talking about Aspilicueta and Alonso. It lasted an hour because they were saying, yeah, we've got agreements with the players. And they said, OK, how much are you willing to offer? And they went, yeah, about that money. Mm. It's great <laughs> to have, isn't it? Because they don't, they don't have anything. So United are, unfortunately, and this isn't United's fault, but they're in a situation where they want to buy a player, but the situation is just so complex. Because you've got I, deferred wages, you've got convincing him, you've got, you know, he's just come back off holiday as well. So I don't think, can you imagine what he's walked back into? He's probably walked back into the training complex at Barcelona and gone, am, am I going? You've got Because you've got the president also coming out of the media going, we don't want to sell him. He's not for certain. No intention of selling him. Meanwhile, he turns around, other side of his face, he's negotiating, going, well, 56 million, can we make it 65? We need the money. You know, what kind of situation is that? And United, unfortunately, are just in a situation where I think they realise that ideally, in an ideal world, because I'm not advocating for him not being in right now, in the best case scenario, he'd be on tour and we'd be doing our training around him and we'd be doing our tactics around him. But the main thing is that he just comes in eventually. And I think, unfortunately, this is going to be a thing that plays out and plays out and plays out. And Barca eventually will get even more desperate than they are now because they need the money. They, they will always need the money and they will eventually stop this just rah, 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 BS sort of stuff. I, I, um, I, hope you're, I hope you're right. And I hope maybe at the end it happens. But my issue isn't with that. Like I said, my issue is why haven't we managed to entertain someone else? The same boy had gone and said that, or, or there's been, again, reports, he wants Champions League football. Let's not forget, as much as Ten Hag and XYZ, we even did a little bit in, in a few streams ago and we said, well, this guy ain't even played that many Champions League games himself, but what a guy, he wants Champions League football. And this Ten Hag pull, if it was so much so, would he not have kicked up a fuss like Martinez is now in Ajax? He would have if if there was the if this guy is clearly on the phone to Ten Hag doing doing chit chat every day, would he not have gone and done some um something with Barca and said, pay me what I'm owed, pay me something, pay me half now, half later, whatever. But then, but then, but then Barca go, we don't have the money, we don't have the money. And if if they said we'll pay you half okay. now, half later, you ain't getting half later. But but let me show you something. Let me give you a little bit of comparison, a little bit of context. Look at how Bayern are dealing with Barca. Just look yeah, at how they're, 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 and they're saying the same thing. You've got no money. It's, yeah, but it's this way. Player going from Bayern to Barca. But look at how Bayern are doing deals with Barca. Either you want the player for 15 mil, pay up, up up front and go. Or else don't come and talk to us. Whereas Manchester United don't, and I'm not going to believe this, they knew what they were getting themselves into. The board knew. You can't tell me that the board are on Twitter getting updates. No. The agents, the board, agent was there just last week doing Malaysia deal. Of course he went to dinner to, to talk, uh, Frankie. They, they knew from the get-go what they're getting themselves, themselves into. Now, either they go all, put, put all the eggs in one basket because that's what it looks like, or it's just about right now pull out and go and entertain someone else. If this guy now sorts his toxicity out with Barca, and if Barca are really desperate, they'll come knocking on the door themselves anyways. But let's go and entertain someone else. The so first, the, 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 Lewandowski, the Lewandowski situation is completely different. That's, they, they want an asset, whereas they have an asset to sell here. And there's a predicament where there's wages involved, they've got their own personal issues, they've got to sell a certain amount of their TV rights. There's so many other things. And we've got Laporta right now doing a chess game where at one point he's saying, I completely want to stay. The next minute he's trying to sort out a deal for De Jong to go. On top of that, the player wants to be at the club. So he's already signed to deferring wages previously. He's happy with, he's happy with this situation. It's just that Barcelona, they need to sell players. 
So Manchester United can either give the money straight away or at expensive price straight away and it gets signed off, or they can play chess and get the player for the right price. Eventually, Barcelona will crack. If they don't, they have to stay with an unhappy player or a player that has, has a certain amount of ruckus going on financially. And it, quite frankly, is on some of the highest wages in the club right now, which they don't want. They don't want these high wages in the club. They're trying to sort out their, their wage structure, similar to what we're trying to do right now, Faz. So I don't know. I, I feel like we have to be patient on this. Yes, we need to look at other targets, but does our manager want other targets? We're finally that, doing... We're finally show, yeah. doing but we're finally doing what, what we've always said we want to do. Back the we manager. Have super chats quickly, DJ, so, then you can come back in. Yeah. Um, uh, Don FF says, um, why, why, why is Manchester United so incompetent? I don't know why that's shifting as well. That's annoying. Um, John Doe says, hope you guys know the season starts in three weeks. We, we do. It does. Yes, <laughs> uh, it does. Um, DJ, you were going to say. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think one of the most annoying things and frustrating things as a, as a fan at the moment is knowing that there was this broad agreement, what, two weeks ago now? 56 million, broad agreement. And I think as far as touched on earlier, like nothing's moved on since then. All of a sudden now there's apparently wages owed and stuff like that. Didn't United know that whilst they were figuring out a broad agreement? Didn't they know that when they were talking to the agent, talking to the players? It's just, again, I think there is, a, I think there is politics that need to play out, definitely. I'm kind of with Marcel on that. There is stuff that needs to play out on a financial and a business level, but I think the incompetence reaches as far as United maybe not having all the information at the table at first to to be able to kind of like um, get but, this deal structured and that. DJ, DJ, do you think that's arrogance though? And Faz actually, like if you believe, and I believe, like I agree with you guys, if you believe that like the United boards, like the scouts, all of that, like the agents knew about like all of these Dion like troubles, do you not think it's arrogance? They're like, yeah, we're going to try it anyway. We, we'll get him. Like, even knowing everything that we as fans know now that has been leaked in the media, that we're kind of agreeing that Manchester United knew before they went hunting for De Jong. Do you not think that's arrogant? To be like, yeah, 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 like, we know all of this. Like, we know that Barcelona, like, need the money. We know that Frankie De Jong is owed 17 million, but we can still get him anyway. And we're not paying the 17 million. We're not going to, we're not going to pay that off. Because I think, like, that's the kind of stunt that United would pull. Like, I yeah. just feel like they'll be like, yeah, we can do it anyway. And not only that, I think that, and I hope that we we get to talk about this, like, on this show, but did they not think, well, maybe we better come up with a plan B just in case? Because who are the replacements? I mean, I know that you, like, Faz, you want Kante, there's Tillemans, and... Ugh. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Kante yeah, made I... Tillemans. I don't want Tillemans. I don't want him. So to answer your question, though, to answer your question, I do think United are that arrogant to, to go into a deal like that. Definitely. Yeah. And I think with United, for me, this deal, because Barcelona needs to sell, was a low-hanging fruit. It was such an easy win, in my eyes, anyway. And maybe I share a bit of that arrogance. Like, I did see it as, it's an easy win. Barcelona needs to sell. We can haggle a bit, haggle for two, three weeks, and then get the deal done. I think it's just progressed further and further along than we were anticipated, especially when Ten Hag is adamant he needs this part of the puzzle. You know, Marcel said a few streams ago, like, this is the most important signing. So maybe the most important signing will have to go all the way right down to the deadline. It might, it might have to, as long as he comes. If the end goal is him coming, then cool, whatever. I wouldn't say it's arrogance. I would say it's naivety. Okay. It's New not ball. naive, guys, at all arrogance. Ten Hag wanted this player. First man on the list. He does his due diligence. He does, he does his due diligence and speaks to the player. It's with the board. Person, the board is naive. Because the board, the, board. With, board. With, the board don't know how to do worked out here, player. Frankie Dion. Frankie Dion gives him the, the, the summer okay. Yes, I, I would want to join. If, if everything aligns properly, I'm professional. I need to sort out my business over there. But I would want to join if it's possible, if something can be worked. Then the club get the get the instructions from Ten Hag. Listen, th this is the number one target. It's that simple. I don't. It's taking longer because f uh, the, the manager wants this player. He's adamant it's this one. There's of course I I believe hundred percent. There's there's option two and three ready to go, or or we will be looked at and 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 gone in for. But this is the main target. It's not difficult to understand. I don't understand it. This it's, is the main not, um, it's not It's not naivety from Ten Hag. I think you must have misunderstood me, but it's naivety from the board because Arnold, uh, Murta, the deputy DOF, Fletcher, these people 
are not able to go and make these type of deals happen. They haven't done that before. They've not because they've not been in the role before. Fast and fairness. Yeah, have they, it's the have first they been time. In the that's right. That's right. So that's why it's lack of experience slash naivety. But it's not arrogance. I wouldn't say it's arrogance, but it's just lack of experience in this type of situation. Uh, Lawrence Bailey says, why are you guys twerking for Frankie de Jong? There's other targets. Well, we did mention the other targets earlier on. Hopefully, to answer your question earlier, Steph, that there's always been that list. It's just been a case of that's the worst case scenario list. It's just, I suppose the biggest question is, when do we go to that list, right? They've and got that list and they're saying, well, in an ideal world, we wouldn't have to go there, but when's where is the tipping point? And I feel like, I feel like a bit more, I actually, ironically, I feel a tiny bit more positive than last week. I don't know whether that's, because like tours starting and like, you know, like we're nearing like the beginning of the season. I, I think it's that more than anything. But like Marcel, in response to, to what you were saying, it's like, okay, yeah, like they had the plan B or like they had another option. I mean, first of all, I, I hope they have. I would hope that they have like a plan B and plan C. But my main like worry or concern at the moment is that if we do move to plan B or plan C after giving up on Frankie Dion, how long do you think it would take the board to make a signing? We've got three weeks. We've got three oh, weeks. No, no. So, a few so, days. So, so, yeah, so we've seen that they can be efficient in the market in terms of the Malassia deal, in terms of hopefully I would like to see Ericsson through the door. So I've seen them be reasonably efficient in the market. Um, and I think if there is a plan B... With a free pardon? transfer. With a free transfer. No, Malassia. No, I'm talking about just the Malassia deal in terms of the, the, the coming in straight away, getting the business done, signed, sealed, delivered. There's, I've seen efficiency from this particular this, this makeshift board right now in, ter in terms of their early stages. I so I think that you can execute that again. So, uh, so I think I can see, I I'm hoping that I would see that again next time when, in terms of getting the second choice or whoever it is. So, I, I don't Marcel, think I'm not gonna lie, I disagree, bro. I, I haven't seen efficiency, I've seen desperation from them. Where's the efficiency? They, scramb couldn't even they get... scrambled deals literally, yeah. scrambled last the, the last minute. That's why we're stuck with Facundo. And Ahmad, literally, we were stuck with these players because we was frantic trying to bring someone in to appease the fans. Somebody. I thought KG That's scouted them, though. KG scouted for Kundo and... The scout, the scout is currently in Thailand. He's there for that reason specifically, to get closer to Facundo, get a closer look, do the eye test. So we'll see. You never know. You never know. I mean, the scout... Scout is not easy. Someone's got to do it. He's a scout. Don F says a serious club will be getting Neves, Tielemans, Kane, and Lissandro uh, Martinez. That's how you compete with uh, City and Liverpool. Act like a big club. Kane, that's a big ask, isn't it? Uh, Harry, <laughs> Harry Kane. I'm not sure Harry Kane would go anywhere near Manchester United at the moment. Uh, Adam says at some point we have to ask the question: How much of a side man is this De Jong brother? You <laughs> don't want you anymore. This is this is the worst kind of super chat when I'm reading it as well. It sounds terrible by voice, doesn't it? Your gal <laughs> don't want you anymore, and she's owing you money. Wake up and smell the coffee, bro. Hey, I mean, hey, brother, one more time, brother. <laughs> I kind of try and verge into a sort of a different accent. Uh, it's well. it just not. It's not good. Bless you. John Doe said Marcel waffling as usual. Oh come on. He's got Marcel baby. doesn't waffle. The positivity is real with Marcel. Yeah. It's 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 no waffle. It's it's all legit. John John, John <laughs> might be a bit hot today. Just have a glass of water, mate. Owen, we go back to the chat. Not not the one about Marcel. The one before about the, the one that you struggled to to wake up and smell yeah. the coffee, bro. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Madams. I need to read this. How much of a Simon is this? Your your gal don't want you anymore. She and she's owing you money. Yeah, it, but but the, Adams, you make a good point. It's like. You can call him a side man, but he's owed money. Like he's not gonna again, 17 million. I'm not going anywhere until you give me my money. So whether they treated him like shit or not, and whether he wants to really like whether he does want to come to United under Ten Hag or not, like for me, I just feel like I have I just have 17 million in my head. I'm not going anywhere. I'd rather be a side man or a side, yeah. Like it's like gal. <laughs> <laughs> He'd already, he had already agreed to deferred wages previously. He's happy with his situation. He doesn't Twice. have to leave anywhere. Twice exactly. already done that. He doesn't have to leave anywhere. He has a contract signed to be there for a certain amount of years. They have to figure out how to pay him, so however they have to do it. Or he has to send them or get the lawyers in or whatever it has to do. But once Manchester United, or Eric Ten Hag in particular, has spoken to him and convinced him of a certain situation in terms of playing freely in the position that you want to play, 
and, and being pivotal to this side, only being one season without the Champions League, he's convinced him that that could be a possibility here and you will get the certain kind of, you know, that, that belief and trust in that sixth position. It's, it, from that moment on, Man United are doing their work and, and it's going to take time and we're not going to, we don't want to be pushed over in the market. So we've got a fixed price. We've agreed an initial price. And now it's to deal with contracts and old money. And, and Barcelona have a whole financial situation that they have to sort out. They would only be able to recuperate, as far as I'm aware, a certain amount of the money if they get a deal done for, at, at a certain particular time. Before they have to... And they have their they have their their 25% of their TV rights just in La Liga that they're selling for like an astronomical amount of money for like 25, 30 years. They still got certain business deals that they have to haggle with, see all the money that they've recuperated and then look at, oh, who's the assets that we should sell? That Guys, takes time. Please just be question. patient with it. Oh, but Marcel, we don't, have have time. we don't have time, Marcel. It takes time. We don't have time. Sorry. <laughs> it's getting like really... We do have time. How many more weeks is there until the window closes? We've been waiting for it's 10 true. years for this. It's true. I'm not, no, but DJ, why are you laughing? Why, why, why are the humans laughing at me? What is going on? How long do we have my to friend. the window closes? The heat no, wave. don't get too Listen. Listen. You know what? You know what? You know what? Marcel, Marcel. Can someone please tell me that? I, someone please tell me how long does the window take? There is time. There is time. There is of course. Time. Then what's the issue? The days. Definitely. I'll count the days now. My, my issue is this year, and this is a question to everybody. Is it out of the realm of possibility that United walk away from the deal, right? We pursue other targets, and then Chelsea come in and get a deal done, and Dion goes straight there. No problem. Also, again, again. No. Who, that. Honestly, that's the question. That. Who can see that happening? Because I can actually see that happening. Don't no. say I can that. Honestly, see that happening. No. Marcel's going to throw the porridge at the window. Don't say it's that. Fifty-three <laughs> days. Fifty-three days to answer your question, Marcel. That's how many days are left in the window. Oh wow! Exactly. And then, and on top of that, <laughs> Chelsea would never. Ch for me, again, personally, Chelsea can never get anywhere near this deal. If let's think about it logically, Owen, please. No, no, it's no. Then 100 percent guys, 100 percent Chelsea, De Jong and Chelsea, it doesn't exist. The man goes to one or two, firstly, Barcelona is the club that he wants to play at. So that's first things first. If there's any other club on this earth that he goes to, it's Manchester United. I'll Faz keep the receipts. So keep them, yeah. Hundred percent. It's Manchester United or Barcelona. I don't want to hear anything else. <laughs> you sound, uh, John, Marco, John. you sound like Harry Maguire. You're like, I don't want to hear anything else. No, 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 no. Harry Maguire is just completely lost. <laughs> he speak, he, he, that interview before that interview before Liverpool was delu complete delusional. That was that was bad, wasn't it? That was uh, really bad. John Doe says, sorry, Marcel, I just think you're wrong. Well, everyone's entitled to their opinions. Oh, yeah, I appreciate um, that. Robert says, I'm a huge Ajax fan. Just trust Ten Hag. Marcel is a legend. There you go. There's the opposite, hey. opposite side of things. Um, he is, absolutely. Hakeem says, it's mad that Barca are holding up the market. You're broke. My United Transfer Committee has to suffer short term for the long term. Leave 17 million cap. Do you not Again, cap his Owen? Do you not cap I was, I was, let's move on. WJ Barrett <laughs> says, we have to give this new structure a chance. This is um, this is unprecedented ball with uh, Barca. We have seen efficiency with Malasia and Ericsson uh, Martinez soon. I was what I was going to move on to next, though. I'll go to you, Faz. Um, since we last spoke, Malasia has been confirmed. He's on tour at the moment. They're saying that Ericsson's going to have his medical this coming week and hopefully he'll join up with the group in Australia. Martinez looks like he's getting closer and closer. Of course, that's one official. I know you only do official, but I, I, it, it, I know that you're probably going to say that, you know, until they're on MUTV and all that kind of stuff. But is there not anything to be positive about when you've got three players there that are nearly over the line when it comes to May United? Um, I'm definitely positive about, um, you know, looking forward to see Ericsson um, in this Ten Hag system. I think, Doing um play of that caliber um on a free is absolutely beautiful, regardless of whatever, because there's no there's no loss there, just just wages. Um, um there's no pressure for the player. Player comes in all happy, there's no price tag attached and anything as such, and it's a nice, smooth, easy deal to happen. So I'm positive on that. With a Martinez deal, not positive. Ajax are again dilly dallying with us because we want two of their players and i'm also a bit surprised why we're not in talks for rafinha who's in the brazilian squad as a starter whereas anthony struggles to get into the brazilian squad and anthony seems to be more expensive than rafinha doesn't make sense rafinha who gets into the brazilian squad 
time we like all the time Premier League, so-called Premier League proven. I don't like to use that, but I'll say Premier League proven. And then you have uh, Mr. Ten Hag's Anthony, who I did want in the squad because Ten Hag wants him. But it seems like, again, now this because of this Anthony and Martinez situation, it, it's, it seems to be getting long. I would just say if, if they really want Anthony and Martinez, put 110 on the table, call it a day, make the deal happen um, as, a, as a joint deal. With Martinez... One thing I am positive about and I am liking is the player really wants to come here. Yeah. It seems like he really wants to come here. He's to the point he's saying, I won't come training. Like, that makes me really happy that he's willing to come here and and play for Manchester United, for Ten Hag and give his everything. This is something to really look forward to where on the other, on the, uh, other hand, you get Frankie De Jong and you don't get any of that. So... Same with Anthony as well. Anthony said to Ajax, you know, if a bid comes in, whatever, with, from Ten Hag, from Manchester United, please let me go. I have aspirations. So these are the, some of the positives, but more so positive about, about Ericsson and hoping that it gets done ASAP. Super chat from Adam says, let's stop all the mental gymnastics. If someone is owing you money, get the feds involved and dip. Tiong is fully in the friend zone. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about <laughs> pre-season. I want to talk about um, Ten Hag's pre-season plan. Because obviously the tour begins, well, it's already begun. A couple of days of training over there in Thailand. We've got uh, Flex and KG, plus the scout. They're different people um, are out there. So they're going to be doing lots of stuff as well. The first tour video is also up on the channel today. So if you haven't watched it already, go and watch it. It's excellent. We've got, I mean, the production level, by the way, how high? There's drone shots. There is drone shots, yeah, of the stadium in Thailand, which we're going to be playing in on Tuesday. It's amazing. Plus, an inside look at the Manchester United changing room as well. Flex and KG were inside the United dressing room. Go and check that out as well. It's amazing. But DJ, what I do want to talk about is what Ten Hag wants to get out of this tour. Now, obviously, a lot of people were talking about our squad that's on tour and not being a great squad. But what do you think Ten Hag is looking to achieve during our time in Thailand and Australia? I think he's just trying to get sort of like the basics down to his system, what he expects. Um, I think he's, you know, trying to change the mentality. You know, our problems are well documented over the last season and, and, and the last few years. And from the limited, you know, little clips I've seen of him in training, he's very, very hands-on. And I like that as a fan. I like the manager that's hands-on with the players. Um, and he kind of he gets it. And I was, I was, was saying before we went live, like, I just think that, the United players now, you can kind of see the body language is a little bit different. They're looking a bit more positive. People are running harder. People are putting their own fitness videos out, sort of twerking for Ten Hag. Pick me, pick me, as KG would say, kind of thing. But I like that. I like that he's bringing a good energy to the club and he's bringing back the standards. I think that's what's been missing. Um, and not just in the first 11, but in the club as a whole, standards. I think standards have slipped and they've dropped dramatically. And we have someone that's a football-obsessed manager, a football-obsessed coach, that is trying to literally build something. So I think from this preseason, he's looking at trying to instill the basics of his system. Um, and I think he's also looking at which wild cards he may be able to select for his first 11 going into the season. I think it's sort of an assessment process. Who's going to be able to fit his system? Who's struggling? Who might not make it? Who needs to go? So that's why I think we're seeing a lot of clips of players really running hard, training hard, because they want to be a part of this. This is something brand new. And this is a footballing man. So... Um, yeah, I think he's just literally just looking at who's going to be able to fit going forward in the season. I guess to follow up on that point then, DJ, are there any players that you think are fighting for their United career that are on that uh, that track Definitely. right now? Definitely. I think um, Aaron Wan-Bissaka is one of those. Um, you know, Ethan Laird um, is there now. Um, Andalo, um, Ethan Laird, I, I believe, deserves to get a chance. He deserves to get some minutes sometime this season. Not sure when, but at least get some minutes. Um and I think when, I think uh, Ethan Laird and Dallo are better than Aaron Wan-Bissaka. So it's one of those things where Aaron Wan-Bissaka has got a lot to prove. I think Anthony Martial um, has got a lot to prove as well. You know, he's been written off largely. Um, I think, you know, if we do end up bringing in a striker, you know, I think United, in my opinion, should try and go for Velotti. Um, Martial would kind of be on the fringes of that again. So I think he is someone that needs to prove a lot. I also think... You know, this is a big season for Marcus Rashford, you know. Um, all the extracurricular stuff is kind of quietened down now. Um, and we want to see Marcus Rashford um, scoring again. We want to see him happy. We want to see him fit. 
So this is a big season for him because we do know that Ten Hag at least wants to make one change to the front, to, to the attack. So someone's place is up for grabs. Um, and lastly, Bruno, I think, is big for Bruno also, you know, with the signing He's of Ericsson. Blocking. Have you seen the vlog? He's yeah, been yeah, yeah. He's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. I actually like it. It's fun to watch. But I think he's definitely someone that is going to be fighting for their place with Ericsson coming in. We know Faz kind of touched on it. The quality that Ericsson brings, that is going to be a, a major threat to someone like Bruno. And you still have Donny there, who is, you know, favoured to the manager. So I think those are the players that need to kind of step it up for this preseason. We've got over 1,400 people watching, so be sure to smash a like on the like button. I don't even know how many likes we've got. Something like 307. Not good enough. Oh, guys are in here with your shoes on. You're in here with your shoes on, guys. Come on, man. I know. Can I shout out somebody in the free seats? Someone called Ali A. He's written, do you guys care about this preseason game against Liverpool? Um, Good question. Yeah, and I thought it was a really good question and kind of links into, Owen, what you were asking us, like, what are your thoughts about preseason? For me, I think preseason is, is it's less for the fans. Do I really care about this game against Liverpool? Of course, I don't care as much as if it was in, like, a real, it was a real Premier League game. Um, but I think that, for me, anyway, like, preseason is less for the fans and more for Eric Ten Hag. Like, he needs to see what he's built in training in the training sessions um these last couple of weeks he he needs to see that in action so i think it's more important for the players and particularly eric ten Hag than us um what one thing that does slightly concern me um i'm sure lots of like fan people like we've all been talking about it is the fact that we've only got Malaysia. And it's just, I mean, like, on tour at the moment. So it's such a shame that, like, Eric Ten Hag doesn't have these players to, like, work with or he hasn't been, like, training with them the past two weeks and he hasn't seen them in action and put a team together and put a team out in preseason so that he can see roughly, like, what he's working with ahead of the Premier League. And that slightly concerns me. Like, if we get these signings in late, how much time does Eric Ten Hag have with them to kind of, like, you know, instill his vision and his style of play? And for them to fit into the team and get to know the other players. Like, that's my concern. So. Uh, Amir with the Super Chat says, how much emphasis do we put on overall preseason performance? Will a poor preseason mean bad things for our objectives in the Premier League, Europa, etc.? I think, Amir, it is a good question. Preseason, and it kind of continues what uh, Steph's talking about there, is you can have a great preseason and then you can lose your first five games in the league. You can lose every single game in preseason and then you can start the season really well. Like it just, it's very difficult to read in sometimes preseason. I remember Louis van Gaal might have been his first preseason. We won every single game. We beat like Real Madrid. We were beating everyone. And then I think what he lose his first game at Old Trafford uh, or at least he drew it. Like again, it, it's very difficult to judge. I think the real interesting thing, and I'll ask you this, Marcel, is do you think in any of these games, let's say this first one against Liverpool, because make no mistake, it is still Liverpool, and say we do get absolutely smashed, that's like 5-0 Liverpool, that will still hurt, irrespective of it being a friendly, it's still Liverpool. But do you expect to see any difference in terms of the style of play? Do you expect to see any difference, or is it going to be still the same as it was at the end of last season? Is it too soon to see that difference? No, 100%. This is what we should be expecting now. We, as a club, are changing the style of football that we are playing now. It's not counter-attack. It's not defensive-based. It's going to be possession-based. So I'm excited for the preseason. It's early tasters to what we're looking to be expecting now. Is he going to play the high line? Is he going to be leaving defenders 1v1? Counter-pressing? Are we going to be pressing high? Are we going to be doing a mid-press? Is it going to be lots of one-twos, underlaps and overlaps? I'm looking at all these things. Early signs of it. Have players understood what's required? Have players actually taken on what he's been talking about? Been seeing all the taster clips and him being, you know, very meticulous on what he's trying to get out of these players. And if they're doing the right things in the in the training sessions, the clever little passes and and the one twos, and you know, just keeping the tempo of, of the football. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm very much looking forward to it. You know, players. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, criticize some of our players in terms of being very rash with the football. Are we going to be looking to be more composed? Is it going to be, you know, a slower build up? Are we, are we, like, who's going to be playing up front? What, what kind of system are we going to play? Is it two sixes? Is it going to be a 10 in there? Is it going to be two eights? Lots of things to look at, you know. Um, excited about that as well. Is how's the back four going to play? Are they going to convert into a three and one full back always high and another one stay or vice versa? David De Gea, where's his position going to be? Because I'm very, very looking, very much looking forward to what he's going to give us this season. 
because if he doesn't give us anything, we're going to be in a lot of issues now. You know, goalkeepers are very important in this kind of style of football that we're embarking on. So, looking forward to this preseason. As the season preseason goes on, though, Owen is where it looks more interesting because they've had a little bit time to gel, get the chemistry and understanding amongst each other. Would you say with the De Gea thing? Actually, you brought it up. Can you be persuaded if he does change his style? Would your criticism soften if you no. see in some of these games his starting even if he changes? No, 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 no. I want to see in the season because that's when it counts. So right now, you know, Liverpool might not play the, the best side this game, you know, and 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 so if he's doing things right now, that's all good and well. Like we were saying before, we might win all the games and he might play fabulous. But I need to see in the pressure moment, 75,000 fans looking for you to deliver this option A, B or C, quality passes into players' feet, quality passes into uh, into the forward line, counter starting the counter-attacks, come in to claim crosses, come in off your line at the right times. I need to see that in the big moments throughout the season. But would you be confident going into the season if you see it in pre-season? No, because no, I know he's, he's too old and he's too default in his way. So I'm just, I, I need consistency first. So there's no chance? No, no, not right now. Not not in the preseason. Throughout the season, I'm very happy to 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 be positive and and applaud his good performances because there will be some. Okay, that's a nice one. We'll move on. Um, Faz, do you expect to see any change in style in preseason, or how quickly do you expect to see that stylistic change if there is one? Marcel, why do you do this? <laughs> I, told you, I told you. I told you. I know. Why? It's free out there. <laughs> Do you think do you think Martial has a chance in this squad? He has he has an opportunity just like every other footballer within the squad. So in August 2021, when Manchester United and Southampton drew, and outside the stadium, you told Flex that Martial needs to leave. He doesn't have the minerals to be in this club. Because I got the receipt. <laughs> For today's stream specifically, I went and pulled up every single one of your fan cam, wow. went through them. And I went and saw that you had a different face and a different opinion for Martial then than what you have now. Yet you have this very, very sickening agenda towards David De Gea that you don't leave, no matter how many times I prove you wrong, and Cam included, yet you have this agenda. Just accept that this so-called positivity of yours is only to certain players and not all. And it's an agenda. It's a narrative. And just because it doesn't fit, you keep going at David De Gea. Even if the man performs in preseason, you're not willing to give him a chance. Yet you are the only advocate that I remember saying, everybody gets a fresh new start, but not David De Gea. Yeah, so can I, can I rebuttal that quickly? So from the season once the season I'm tired commits, I'm tired Marcel I'm tired we do this every week I'm tired I, I, agree. I agree with Marshall I agree with the Marshall statement though because I don't really think he's good enough to play for them yeah. but yeah, you were the same I, person when David De Gea used to make saves outside Old Trafford on the fan cams on the fan cams when Flex would ask you about David De Gea you would rate him highly would you not no, 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 no. I always would complain. And you, I'm pretty sure you missed a couple of fan cams then because I, I then, always would complain. I always I complain. Go, the the Brighton save, make the, the Brighton save, fantastic. But then I there's then. moments, there's moments against Man City away, there's okay. moments against Norwich at home, there's moments I can go on. I, they're all there. There's times okay. where I'm just not very happy with it. I you today, myself. Can we, can we try and like talk about pre season and, and the future and, and I like. I completely understand both of your points. I'm I mean, worst is, Steph, to, is that we were. We were. <laughs> it always comes back around. It always comes back I mean, around. You this. You I don't know yes. what you're talking. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Jay. I don't know. What <laughs> what you're about. Uh, to answer <laughs> Owen's question, hold on. I, to answer I, Owen's question, to answer Owen's question, I'm very much excited about preseason. You know why? Because it gives Ten Hag a chance, just like DJ said, to sift out and filter out the weak ones in this squad. I really want to see what Telles does now, because Telles seemed to be oh, panicking yeah. in that fast, in that in that little passing drill that these guys were doing. Telles to me was looking a bit shaky, and Malasia looked really sharp. Malasia looked really good. He was really confident to consider that's probably his first training session in such high caliber of a football team. No disrespect to anyone, but this is really good now. 
go and let's see, sit, let's filter everything out. Everybody gets a fresh start and whatever. Players have been nearing their te- <laughs> in three years. In three years, Martial will have a testimonial in Manchester United. In two years, Luke Shaw will have a testimonial. So it's going to be very interesting to see which players start getting sifted out. And this preseason will give us a clear identity, uh, sorry, idea as to which players are going to be exiting the club either January or next summer. Uh, Chatterboy Comics with a super chat says, Marcel looking like Prime Corleo, Marcel's Paradise. <laughs> I do know who that is. That's the one I do know who oh, that is. <laughs> yeah. How, how could you not know who Corleo is? You going to take that, Marcel? Yeah, it's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kamal says, uh, dude, your outfield players can't pass. That is accurate as well, referencing David De Gea. Um, I do want to talk about Ronaldo before we wrap things up as well, because arguably the biggest story of the tour so far is the one player that isn't there or one of the players that isn't there, that being Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, Steph, do you think he arrives on tour at any point? Do you think he's back in a Man United shirt at any point? He was part of the uh, first uh, the kit unveiling on Friday. Do you think we actually ever see him wear it on a on a pitch for Manchester United? Can I just okay in response to that? Just l- let me let me work backwards. Okay, so in response Go to yours, did you, did you see that you know the kit launch with Ronaldo shirt? This was one of the I have I've made notes. I make notes. Can someone please explain to me why? the Glazers are trying to sell his shirt when we don't really know like what's going on with him. He might be leaving. Like I just, I just I think you know the answer. <laughs> I think you know the answer. I was really shocked to know the name. Like, honestly, like this is a real question. Cause I like when the, when the kit launch came out, I was like, okay, let me go and browse. Like I'll take a look. And I saw, <clears throat> you know, Fernandez, all of them. And then I saw Ronaldo and I'm like, huh? Full price. Full price, Ronaldo shirt. Um, he might be leaving. Nah, Owen. I hope your dad hasn't brought a Ronaldo shirt. No, no, no. I mean, last year he bought a uh, a Cavani number seven shirt, and then Ronaldo signed afterwards. He was not thrilled. Yeah, but the thing is, Owen, if your dad buys a Ronaldo shirt, then that means Ronaldo will stay. Leaving. No, oh, no, he'll stay. He'll stay. If the opposite happens, the opposite happens. He'll okay. get it. Oh, and then he might leave. I don't. I don't. I don't try to look too much into it. I can't understand. We're talking about a high level of power here that we don't really understand. We're talking about quantum level physics that even they can't. Even, the Hedron Collider can't figure this one out when it comes to my dad and buying shirts. So I, he's nervous about it. When I, I spoke to him about it, he went, "Who can I buy then?" I went, "No one." Don't. <laughs> okay. So in answer to your question. If is Ronaldo going to be on the tour? Like, do you think he'll ever play in a United shirt again? That all depends on whether your dad buys a Ronaldo shirt and you have your answer. Well, to be fair, I was about to say that's a heavy burden, but that's the power. That's the power. That is the power. The power is that a heavy burden, in fairness. Um, I think we won't see I don't Ronaldo, know. guys. I don't think we'll you don't see think him. So. Again. No, I don't, no, no. I, I, you know I what? I can, I just think, you know, the timing of everything, you know, the family issues, timing of everything. For me, just for me, just for me, these are my thoughts. I just think it's all a bit convenient, you know. It's just like, you know, stock take and then, you know, everyone starts calling in sick kind of thing, you know, at work. It's one of those things. So for me anyway. But um, yeah, I don't think he'll yeah, I think he's made his decision. He's made a decision and he's a, he's in he's in a different phase now. His interest and our interests aren't aligned anymore. He wants something different, um, to, to what we want kind of thing. So uh, Faz, do you think Ronaldo's going to appear on the tour at any point? Think he's going to be in a United shirt again at any point? Um, I think so. I think um, the club the wouldn't both? have gone out. Uh, I think Ronaldo will be part of... Ronaldo will stay in Manchester United. I think... Um, I still am I'm not 100% convinced that he's leaving. Reason being is obviously Manchester United are publishing him with, with the new um, kit and it, it's a bit shameless if you now think he's leaving and on top of that at 37 going into 38 Ronaldo thinking that he can go and and do some damage in Champions League do some damage in um, in contention for Ballon d'Or and whatever whatever just get numbers I think Ronaldo is slightly now getting a bit too ahead of himself his hip issue keeps coming back and it's getting worse and worse. And it's not going to get better if you're playing the you Champions League. You sound like he's 90, Faz. It's yeah, hip issue. It is. Oh. it is, though. Let's be real. The cold it weather, is. when it rains. Oh, yeah, so it, it's not like his hip is going to... And you know what? I've really thought about it because he's my favourite player ever. 
after Ronaldinho, but he's my favorite player. Anyways, I've really thought at 37, the way he's behaving and thinking that he can go and do some jam- damage with, for example, Chelsea or whoever, it's not going to happen. And I've come to agreement with myself that wherever Ronaldo goes, the team will have to function around him. So you say you come to an agreement with yourself. <laughs> yeah, because I have like I talk is, is, to myself, is, is, right? Is, is that no, right? The definition. I, mean, I, say, everyone does that. I, I agree with myself, that. actually. There, yeah, yeah. I, I, oh yeah, yeah. I talk to myself, right? So part of me doesn't want him to leave. Part of me wants him to leave. But I think he's gonna he's gonna talk to his agent and come to you know eventually realize that nobody's gonna pay him the wages that he wants. And after leaving Manchester United, he's gonna have to have some sort of wage cut or some sort of decline for example in terms of the size of the club because Chelsea are not as big as Manchester United Bayern aren't as big as Manchester let's just be real no club is as big so he'll probably stay out one season just see it through and then go somewhere else and and he's probably got two years left uh, in him anyways to play high level football or one year left so I don't see him leaving I really don't I think it's just a bit of a situation that's going on uh, and it's probably just 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 a phase that he's probably going through and it'll calm down eventually Oh, is Ronaldo leaving is like someone dying their hair to you. <laughs> just a face. He'll go, he'll go over it. <laughs> it's yeah, fine. just a face. Marcel, I, the eternal optimist, do you think Ronaldo's going to stay? Yes or no? Um, well, I agree with you firstly about Ronaldinho. Um, he's definitely one of the best players. Um, not sure, but uh, Ronaldo for me, firstly, there was a better number seven than him at the club and George Best, hands down for me. So if he goes, there's positives. If he stays, there's positives. Um, so I'm not too worried about him going. It's just there's there's other things that we have to think about. This captaincy. Does he get the captaincy after handing a transfer request for our club? So he's kind of, you know, he's kind of been detrimental to his own self in, in the sense of coming back to this environment with the tour team, with the team on tour. How does that work? How does that dynamic work? We know that Maguire is not really favored by the fans, or and, and a lot of people don't really respect him. I've seen last season Rashford you know, cursing at him in the middle of a pitch in the game, you know. He's had poor interviews after poor interview, both Liverpool games. Poor every single game this season, poor. So I don't see Maguire being the captain. So who's going to be the captain next season? You know, it's either, for me, Bruno Fernandes or De Gea. So that's another whole debate in itself. Um, I, I don't think Ronaldo really helped us in that. The timing of it, I have to give him the benefit of the doubt because it's family issues and this guy's a fantastic footballer. So I have to give him the benefit of the doubt with that. But he may be, it's maybe looking like it's better off if you leave now. You know, options for us in terms of the 50 million, um, you know, recuperated and, and so much a huge wages off the bill that you can maybe get another young hungry footballer in for that price and, and get Ten Hag to work with him. So I don't know. I'd, I'd, I would like to see him back on the tour because you have to gel with these footballers, whether you like it or not. I've seen Tenen Sheringham and, and, and Andy Cole get along. So he has to he has to be professional. He has a World Cup year coming up. So if he is a part of the squad, get on with it, get your head down and work under the manager. But if you're, I would, my preference would be for him to go. Uh, you know, but, you can't... But Marcel, yeah, but go Marcel, on. I'll, be, I'll be real with you. Like, Ronaldo's clock and our clock are two different clocks. In terms of us challenging for major honours, we're talking maybe three, four years at best. And that's if Ten Hag gets absolutely everything correct, everything spot on, transfer windows, players play to the best of their ability, etc. Ronaldo's clock, I'm guessing he wants to win something next year. So that's what I was saying before. Our paths do not align with what he wants. 100%. So, 100%. I, so I do think at 37, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the hips starting to play up a little bit. I heard he's had an existing knee injury for many, many years that he's managed yeah. quite well. Yeah, tendinopathy, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where can you can you really stay at United for another year knowing that they're not really going to be challenging for anything? I just don't see it happening at this point. And I, I just think that, yeah, and I just think that we're talking about the greatest goal, goal scorer of all time who's hungry for accolades, who's hungry for gold. United will be languishing in potentially sixth, seventh, fifth, you know, hopefully we can get top, uh, top four or whatever. But I'm just going to say that that does not align with this man. This man is the power of all powers in footballers. So if he's made a decision, I'm not going back to Man United. That's, for me, that's done and dusted. And I think us fans were smart enough to know that at this point in time, he, he, he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be yeah. there. And I think he's making it quite clear, quite clear. 
Don't so, be surprised. So, just quickly, don't be surprised if coming to the deadline week slash a couple of days before the window closes, Barcelona start making deals happen with Frankie de Jong. Uh, Bayern start making deals with Lewandowski and then Ronaldo starts moving towards Bayern. Don't be surprised. That's all I'm saying. I think one thing that I take from all of your opinion, like the one thing that I took from this short conversation about Ronaldo is like... I agree, like all of everybody's opinion is valid. But again, my concern is Marcel, you talk very favorably and positively about, oh, well, if Ronaldo goes, we'll find a replacement. And that's, you know, it frees up the wages and all of that. No, 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 no. That's just the Glazers will keep that and they'll come up with that. I'm telling you now, if we if we let go of him and he goes, I, I don't know where that money's gonna that money will not be for a bigger budget it won't be for rebuilding the stadium it will be for glazer dividends like honestly and if he does go then like the next kind of panic station is who's going to replace him for next season like we don't have like an out and out striker yeah yeah so what i would what i would go on to say is that i i understand the sentiment on that but and 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 you would believe that it's not going to be you know utilized for the club but so the best and, and i can't believe i'm saying this because Martial's not my guy, but I have to believe these players going forward. And I have and Ten Hag, firstly, guys, there's going to be footballers in this team that we're not going to think deserve to play because we've seen them in previous year or whatever. But he has to try and get something out of these footballers. It's that simple. So Martial, for me, is definitely in that category. And, and Martial's best season was a fluid front three system with Bruno behind, Rashford and, the other, and, and another footballer on the other side. They, he had fluid. The, the goals were spread out that way, Steph. So... You know, Ronaldo's an encumbersome 20 goals a season man, guaranteed. But you have to kind of play through him, similar to how Portugal do. You have someone around him, a system made for him. Whereas, you know, we're going to be, you know, I feel like very much the goal should be spread out a little bit more. So I do think that they will find a replacement. But if they don't find a replacement, the positive is that there's more footballers to spread out these goals. And hopefully there's a better vibe around the club. You know, DJ's mentioned Bruno, my guy, you know, has been, you know, doing vlogs and stuff. I hope that the feeling around the club, that Ten Hogs worked on that and he's got a, a good chemistry and a good unit of footballers because that's what we're going to need. It's going to be we'll a different season. I think we'll find a replacement. I think we'll find a replacement because Ronaldo's only going to be here for one more year anyway. Yeah. So what it's done is just sped up the clock. The clock's just been sped up if he does leave for us to replace him because we was going to replace him in a year time anyway. So, um, yeah, it's, it's down to United and, 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 and you know, Ten Hag to, to formulate that because I don't think that this was part of their plans coming into the transfer window. So now as fans, we'd like to see a response. That's if he does go. A couple of super chats, then we'll wrap it up. Hakeem says, who has had a better United career, Shaw or Martial? Anyone fancy picking that one up? I don't, sure. want I don't want to answer you. I don't answer because I don't answer. I don't want to answer. Luke Shaw. Martial. I would say Martial. Interesting. Um, Shallow Boy Comic says uh, Frankie Diong has come to an agreement with himself. The player loves himself since many months ago. For British Romano, I can't do a very good you've Romano. Do, unfortunately, no, you've got to do. You've got to do the accent. The full. I can't, can't, I, I, I can't. That is the one thing I wish I was so much better at, Steph. And that is like impressions or accents. I'm terrible at them. I just can't do them. He loves the club. He loves the club. Yeah. He loves... You always have to move your head. He loves the club. Here we go, guys. Um, Here we go. Scott, Scott Kelter says, when was the transfer request put in from um, Cristiano Ronaldo? I don't know if there was ever an official one. I think Ten Hag has just been told through third parties, essentially, that Ronaldo wants to leave. But by all accounts, he had uh, a, a meeting with the player prior to everyone going on holiday, and that wasn't brought up. So... You never know. If there's another meeting held in the future, maybe Ronaldo has changed his mind. We can we can hope. Anyway, guys, look, amazing show. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. Of course, Flex and KG are on tour for the remainder of this month. So now is the time to subscribe because there's plenty of amazing content coming up. Um, another quick super chat just coming before I wrap things up. Could Ronaldo family situation be a cover-up of him leaving or are we assuming he's leaving because of reports? I really don't think there's, I'm not, you know, this isn't conspiracy view or anything like that. I really don't think that um, it's anything like, you know, nefarious or it's 4D chess. I'm not even on board of, he's pressuring people. Rah, rah. I do think there are legitimate family issues. Um, I think it's just at the same time that he wants to leave, to be honest. I think that, one thing you can't question Ronaldo is being professional. He is a professional at the end of the day. Um, does he? Would he force a move through? Absolutely. He did at Juventus. He just left. But I do think there are 
family issues. And look, and if that's the, the line from the player and the club, and when they people say family stuff, you just have to take it, don't you? And um, I'm sure the truth will come out in the future anyway. But anyway, guys, look, thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining us, the panel. And we'll be back soon. We're out of here. Peace.